So, up, Andrew? It's good to be here. As was mentioned, my name is Justin Koo. I come all the way from the Portland, Oregon area. Yeah? All right, Portland. Cool. Wasn't expecting that, but great. Uh, I, I, I'm, I live in Portland, Oregon, but I'm actually from Southern California. Okay, cool. So, all of you SoCal people like me are suffering right now. I've only been here for two days, and I'm like, dang, I'm so glad that I'm here. What a privilege it is. I was telling Jose, what a privilege it is to be here on, on campus and to spend this time with you guys, but also what a privilege it is to not have to live here for very long, to be able to go to the West where it's not as cold. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, I, I work, people often ask, what do I do? I, I run a YouTube channel, run a couple podcasts, a couple YouTube channels. I do some consulting work in the online sphere. And, and when I got to hear about this idea of press together, this theme of bringing communities closer together, I got really excited because this is right in line with kind of what I've been really focusing on over the last, I don't know, however many years of my ministry, of my life. I've been seeing this movement of God, of, of, of changing the way that we see people, changing the way that we see the world. I think all too often religion has done this thing where we create camps and categories of people, the us versus them mentality. And, and whether it's Christianity versus Islam, or it's Buddhism versus atheism or fill in the blank. We have these categories that exist. And as Adventists, we're certainly not immune from this. In fact, maybe even perhaps as Adventists, we suffer from this mentality, this way of thinking all the more. This we are over here and you are over there. But this idea of press together, hopefully, and I understand that this is the heart behind it, isn't just like the us pressing together and keeping away from all of the thems over there. But it's this bigger move of God that I'm seeing the Spirit doing. And it's so exciting to see that we're breaking down walls, categories of who is the us and who is the them. And the result is that we're all pricing together as one. Whether that's we, we, we agree or disagree on, on things like politics or even things like religion, that we can even agree to disagree and in the face of all that come together and press together and do life together, learning from each other in humility and respect and in love. And so as I'm hearing about this, I'm so excited because I feel like God's been doing this thing in my life, challenging a lot of my assumptions about the way that I see the world, the way that I see other people, the way that I see the them categories. No, maybe it's more true that there are no thems and there are no uses. And maybe it's just that we're all people. And, and could it possibly be that the reality of the world is simply that we are all one family under God, that even if you might not know God yet or might not even believe in God, that the way that God sees the world is that even if you are maybe not actively pursuing him, he still considers you his own. I think one of the beauties about the way that God sees the world is that he's never seen you or anyone else in, in any other light or any other context than as his children, as his family. And I think that this is what the cross is so beautiful, uh, that it communicates exactly this idea, this truth that, that he has always seen you as his child even when we are far away from him. I think all too often we look at the thems, we look at other people out there in the world as these prodigal people. And maybe we've even adapted or adopted that, that identity for ourselves. And we've, we've done this thing in our lives with these things that we're ashamed of, these things that we, we promised God that we would never do. And we find, somehow find ourselves, well, in our minds at least, far away from God. And we identify ourselves as these prodigals. But as I, I've been spending more time in the, in the book and I've been spending more time in, in growing and maturing and in allowing God to, to warp my views and to change my opinions on things, the more that I see the truth of it is, is that you might have identified yourself as a prodigal, but God has never seen you in any other light than as son, as daughter. And all too often we look at people as prodigals, we look at people as far away from God, not realizing that God has, since the very beginning, been intimate and close. Even in the garden we see God drawing close to the very people that have severed a relationship. And we see that there's just this one collective unity, this one body. We even see this as much that Jesus talks about in the book of John, that, that there's only actually one family, one shepherd, one flock, one group of people. It's no longer us and them, it's that God is reconciling all people, that he promises if he's lifted up, he draws all men to himself. And there's this beautiful unity and, and, and community that takes place as we press together, not in our own individual clusters, but as we press together as one in Christ. And so one of the things that has been happening in my life is, is I've been able to start to shift the way that I see and perceive other people. And that's true of my Christian brothers and sisters. But I believe that God's wanting us to dream even further beyond these boundaries, that God is doing something much bigger and broader than I could have ever expected. 
and no story in my life, at least in the last year, has communicated this truth more to me than the story of my good friend and my barber, Chico. Chico is someone that I met in Portland, Oregon. He's the guy that I get my hair cut from. Every time I go to see Chico in the, in the barber shop, I learn something new about Chico. For example, recently I learned that Chico comes from Texas. Chico's mother in Texas was a bank robber back in the day. And, and, and there, his family literally is part of the Mexican mafia, part of the organized crime, running gangs and all kinds of crazy things. And I'm like, dang, this is the guy that I'm trusting with a razor blade next to my neck. Chico is a, is a felon. He's actually spent time in prison. He actually got sent to prison five years to life because he got caught selling meth to the feds, which apparently if you're going to sell meth, and hey, listen, you do your life the way you want to do your life, but just a small piece of advice. If you're going to sell meth, consider not selling meth to the feds because apparently where it leads you is it leads you into prison, as that's where Chico was found finding himself. Chico was in prison for, for five years, and as part of the, the way to protect him because his gang wasn't quite in prison yet, they sent Chico to solitary confinement to protect him because he didn't have people watching his back. So Chico's in solitary confinement, and as you would imagine his case would be, filled with just this discouragement, this doubt, this, this uh, alienation, his kids on the outside, his family's on the outside, everyone that he loves, is, he's just separated and he's depressed. So he's in this prison, in solitary confinement, all alone, just hit rock bottom, and it's like, dang, what's going on here? Is there any hope for my life? And Chico would describe an experience to me that he had in prison where he was in this low of lows and in this moment he opens himself up to the divine, like whatever is out there, God, I don't know if it's you or if there's a such thing as a God, but if you're there, help my brother out, man. So he's here and he has this experience. He describes it as blinding light, this incredible sensation of warmth in his being and then just peace. He's never been happier then when he was in solitary confinement, he tells me, he had a moment, a, a, a touch with the divine, something that he wasn't even sure was out there. Well, the story goes that he would eventually get out of prison. And once he's out of prison, he's searching and trying to figure out, well, what in the world was that? Clearly there's something out there, but what is it? But he had a bad experience with religion. He had a bad experience specifically with Jesus, with the whole Catholicism thing. So he wasn't really looking for there. And as most of us do when we're searching for answers, he was on YouTube. And he would find YouTube channels like Joe Rogan and other kinds of like self-help things. And he found this one guy who was talking about self-help, positive thinking, this way to, to be more courageous and all these different kinds of things. And he was consuming this content and it was being really valuable to him. It was transforming his life. It was giving him a sense of self-esteem again. And then he started to hear kind of, kind of stories that were challenging him. Now, Chico had a background, as you know, in drugs and alcohol. And he was, saying, he was committed to staying sober as long as he could. And he was sober for, for quite some time. But then this YouTuber starts talking about his experience with ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is this hallucinogenic drink, this thing that causes you to like, have this uh, crazy spiritual experience. They talk about all kinds of weird things. And he's like, man, how could this guy that I revere and I respect be talking about this? And as the story is told, he eventually leaves, he lets his guard go down and decides, okay, I'm going to give this thing a shot. I'm going to actually try ayahuasca. He finds himself in South America along the Amazon River in Iquitos, Peru, ready to go see his shaman, ready to take ayahuasca. And rather than tell you more of the story, I'm just going to let him share what that experience was like. Go and go to video one. And so I clicked that one and, you know, I watched it. I still didn't know what it was. And then I clicked the next one and the next one. And it just took me down this rabbit hole. Yes. And to where I was watching these interviews of people after an ayahuasca ceremony and the look on their face. And, and you know, you could just tell that they were just like at peace. And, and what they described is exactly what I felt was lacking inside of me. And I was just so thirsty for it. So I just did my research, dude. And like you know, two weeks of being obsessed over something, you can learn a lot. Yeah. So I, uh, within two weeks of finding out about this ayahuasca, I booked a trip, dude. I was just like, it, it just felt like it called to me. You know, there's very few times in your life when you feel this feeling, I believe, but when you feel it, you know, and it was just like, I was being called to the Amazon, you mm. know? And so I looked up and checked all these reviews on this particular place and, so I went down there by myself, bro. I'm like, what? 
am I doing? You know, I, like in my mind, I'm like, are they gonna like cut me open, steal my kidneys yeah, or something? No, I thought about that too. But you know, <laughs> I'm, like, wake I'm up already in a miserable, bro. Like, what else could you know? Like, I'm. <laughs> let's just take a chance. So, all right. Yeah. So I went down there, and it was you know just traveling by yourself out of the country helps you grow so much. You know, mm-hmm. and like, is this your first time out of the country? Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. I didn't even know if I would be able to go because of my history, my felony record. Right. But sure enough, um, in Peru, you know, they they accept they accept felons and you know, so I went, no problem. You know, I'm thinking like when I go in there and they check my passport, they're gonna be like, Policia, you know, and I'm like <laughs> But once I got through, I'm like, Okay, and I just walk, keep walking, keep walking. I'm like, Shh, I'm good. You know? Wow. So yeah, I I check out this place and and I went to a retreat. I stayed there for a week. You know, my first ayahuasca ceremony, I had no idea what I was about to experience. All I knew was how desperate I was and how willing to go through anything that I was to to feel better. You know, um, for I've never been to an ayahuasca ceremony, let alone watch the YouTube video. So help, help paint a picture for me. What does this look like? I'm picturing like a teepee out in the jungle kind of a thing, sure, banging sure. drums, yeah, past yeah, the yeah. peace pipe kind of a yeah, thing. Is, yeah. is, is that what it's like? A, a little bit, a little bit. You know, like there's no there's no plumbing. You know, like I mean, there's no you know hot and cold water. You know, they use the water from the reservoirs that they get from you know the rivers and all that. Um, everything like the, the place that I was at, it was on some stilts because the water rises. Yep. You know, I remember uh, this. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was re- I was telling you the story. You, I, oh, you I, saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I well, I went to Iquitos for uh, a mission trip when I was a senior in high school. Right. All all the houses are on stilts, and the season that we went was low season, mm-hmm. and so we went in and they invited us to play a game of soccer in this in this in this field. Right. And uh, what we thought was just just mud. Turns out it wasn't because Ooh. when it's high season <laughs> and you got to use the bathroom, oh, man. You just throw that mess out the window yeah. eventually the water comes back down and just settles and so right. we're playing soccer with the locals and they're playing barefoot they're running yeah. around yeah and then you know you take a kick and you miss and you fall bam on your back and you got you got stuff all, all over your back you. like when you were a baby <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow dang dude um so yeah i mean like where we went it took about 45 minutes on the boat to get to to the village i th- oh, what was it called leave Libertad, I think. Libertad, I think, is a, is a village. Yeah. So freedom. Is that what that means? Freedom. Yeah. 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 Okay. Libertad. And so, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, a, a level of discomfort. You mm-hmm. know, you're just like in the jungle, you know, and it's hot, it's muggy and all this and that. And you're just like, man, all right, you know, I'm here. Let's let's see what happens. So where we hold the ceremonies, it's like a, it's called a maloka. And it's this... Um, it's this round kind of like structure, you know, almost like a, I wouldn't say a teepee, but you know, like a gazebo type of thing, but okay. with nets all around it, you know, so the bugs don't get in and it's pretty tall, you know, and like you look up when you're in the Maloka and you see how they, uh, how they engineered this thing. And it's like, you kind of question whether it's stable or not, you know, and like, but you know, you're there and then you're just going with the flow. And, you know, I think it was the second night that we were there the first day you just get situated and. You know, you get to know people who have already been there and, you know, ask them, you're asking them all kinds of questions about like what was experience like. But no matter what anybody tells you, bro, you will never, ever be able to comprehend what you're about to experience unless you actually experience it for yourself. And so, you know, that that day, you know, we skip dinner or dinner, you know, we eat breakfast and lunch and, you know, you take this flower bath, which is supposed to help, you know, kind of cleanse the energy and all that stuff and you get ready for your ceremony and you put your intentions into, um, you write, you know, they told us to write out our intentions to kind of just kind of, you know, put on paper what we are there for, what we're looking for. What'd you um, write down? You know, I, I, I wrote, my first intention was to, uh, was more like a prayer, I guess. Um, cause you know, you can pray to mother ayahuasca, the, the, and the spirit of the medicine is a female. And so, you okay. know, mother ayahuasca is what they call. It. Um, and so, I pray and and I'm writing this down and I I essentially ask to help cure whatever needs to be cured, heal whatever needs to be healed, help me find self love, so that way I can love others. And that was just simple, you know. It's like the first thing that I it's the only thing that I wanted. And so, you know, I, it comes. I think it's eight o'clock is when the ceremony starts and it's nightfall, you know, and the stars are beautiful. You know, you can see all the stars. There's no light pollution and you know, you're just getting ready for it. And 
So meditate a little bit before the ceremony and, and pretty soon, you know, it's just like everybody's in there. The shaman are in there. There's three shaman or two shaman and then one, you know, woman. I don't know if you'll call it shaw woman. <laughs> <laughs> shaman that was a woman, you know, and and the facilitators, they were there and, you know, they were um, everybody's just quiet. You know, you could just feel it. it's about to go down, you mm-hmm. know, and like so the shaman calls the first person and you know like you're laying in the circuit this this building this or the structure is just circular it's round you know so um you're laying on your mattress and you know i'm getting nervous because i don't know what's going to happen and you know one by one everybody starts to go up and take their drink take their drink and take their drink and you know here it's my turn you know they call me raul and i'm just like oh my god dude i walk up there i'm just like my heart is just pounding dude like what what's the what's the bad scenario that plays out in your mind uh people freaking out you know like am i gonna freak out and like what's gonna happen you know and you hear about people having bad trips bad trips which you know now that i'm you know been through everything like you can't ever have a bad trip if you look for the good out of it it was certainly in my case you know i've had horrible horrible like trips but this first one was, you know, it's just like, I'm so nervous. And, uh, you know, so I go and I kneel humbly before the shaman and, you know, they pour the, the, you know, my dose and my drink and, you know, I just pray to it. And, uh, here goes nothing, bro. It's like, I can't turn bottoms back. Bottoms up, huh? Yep. Bottoms up, bro. What, I drink what does it, it taste like? Bro, it tastes like, <laughs> and, and <laughs> bro, the next day you smell it. You're like, get that away from me. You know, and like, just, oh my God, it's just like, it's horrible. But, you know, you do your best to not smell it when you or taste it when you drink. You know, I just hold my breath. Some people, you know, after they take their drink, they put water, they drink some water and swish it around and spit it out. But I want the full effect, bro. I don't want anything to impede or hinder, you know, like my experience. I want everything. I'm that desperate, you know, like, so I take it and I say thank you. And I go back to my mattress and I'm just like. I cannot believe I'm doing this right now, dude. And so I lay, I sit down and, and cross my legs and just start meditating. You know, five minutes goes by and nothing happens. Ten minutes goes by and nothing happens. Fifteen minutes go by, nothing happens. Everyone's and just sitting there everybody's silently. Everybody's just quiet, bro. Everybody's just quiet. And then probably within the half hour, I'm starting to doubt whether or not, like, I'm going to feel anything. And so... Before you know it, dude, sure enough, like, oh, my God, something starts to happen. I'm like, is this it? Oh, my God, this is it. Oh, and I start to kind of, like, freak out a little bit because, like, I can see my vision of whatever I could see. This My whole perception just starts to sway left to right. And in that moment, bro, it's so crazy how the shaman, it they start to, he starts to sing, the, the main shaman. He starts to sing. And it starts to kind of freak me out a little bit. Like, how can this be like, right, like a perfect timing? Dude. Uh-huh. You know, he starts to sing and he starts to sing this beautiful, just like powerful, just like indigenous in their language. And it's, I start to go on this journey, bro. And before you know it, I have lost all concept of reality, bro. I don't know where I'm at. I'm confused. I'm scared. I'm starting to kind of panic, you know, but the shaman is singing also. So like they tell you before, like if you find yourself in a, bad place or or an uncomfortable scary place focus on the shaman Mm. and his words so i start to do that but still i'm still like it gets to the point bro where your whole concept of reality is fragmented you don't know if the life that you know to be yours actually existed like Mm. you are that confused about what's going on like do i even have a son is my mom waiting for me did i even like have a job like what is going on like Am I going to die? You know, like all this stuff. And it's like learning how to walk, you know, like you're just floating around, like trying to just get a hold of something familiar, some kind of concept of reality, but there's nothing. I'm, I should have prepared you guys for that clip a little bit better. I realized that I didn't like, keep, like tell you enough about it so you could brace yourself. I heard some comments on near the front, like, dang, that sounds creepy. You're like, good God. Like, oh my gosh. Like, sorry about that. That was my bad. I have it in my notes here. Give disclaimers. Didn't give any disclaimers, and I apologize about that. 
Um, that, that's all of me. That's my bad. I accept responsibility for that. But man, like, so this is kind of where God's been moving me towards. Like, the, when I look at the life of Jesus, Jesus is spending time with the others, the people that are outside of his community group. And, and I, I would think that a lot of the religious leaders at the time, like, really feel uncomfortable about, you know, getting their filth on themselves. And what happens if I hang out with the tax collectors or the prostitutes or the quote-unquote sinners and, God forbid, the Gentiles? And I've been seeing God move me in this direction. And I don't know how that this all made you feel, but, like, I grew up Adventist. Like, and I, I, I grew up in an Adventist academy, sang in the choir, K through 12, did the whole thing. I mean, every once in a while, yeah, sure, I drank coffee, but not ayahuasca. I, I just had zero baseline, zero experience when it comes to this, this, this thing. And God's moving me in this direction. I remember walking into the, the barber shop that one time, needing a new barber, and, and I meet Chico, and it's almost as though like God highlights Chico in my mind, like, this is the dude. Spend time with this guy. And so what I would do, this was about 14, 15 months ago, I would come back every couple of weeks for this haircut in Portland. If you've ever been there, it's really bougie when it comes to haircuts. It's like a $40 haircut every time I would come in. And I'm driving two hours round trip in order to get there because like I feel in my spirit like God's like lean in, there's something here. So when I sit down to do this conversation, I'm like really uncomfortable because there's a lot of stuff that I never knew nothing about. There's drugs involved, there's gang banging, there's prison. I, I didn't show it in that first clip, but this is kind of the conversation I'm having on my podcast, on my, on my online content, and, and, and I'm sitting there, and just like, what do I do with this? And then he continues to talk, and things don't get better, they just get worse, because now Chico starts to talk about an experience that he had with the spirit of this drug, this hallucinogenic drink, Mother Ayahuasca, and I'm even feeling more uncomfortable. So I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable before things get better. Video number two, here we go. But she was beautiful, beautiful, and she was so nurturing and loving, and her, the there was light emanating from within her, hmm. and because everything around was dark, but her face was just light, beautiful light, and she held up this ball of light, and I looked at it, and I reached for it, and we both simultaneously, bro, just put it into my chest where my heart is, and in that exact moment is when I felt pure love it wasn't like bliss or ecstasy or like a high bro it was just like absolute love unlike anything I've ever felt in my life and it was for myself mm. and it was of myself if that makes sense bro it was just like it was just pure me love you know and was it uh pure like you you loving yourself or was it her loving you and you were receiving it it was everything bro it was like love in its purest form like it's, it's hard to explain but it's just like you just it's just love and when i knew it to be love it was almost as though at the same time because you talk about like information getting downloaded and stuff like that when people have like these experiences that's what it was like this this knowing just came into me and it was like this is not mine to keep this mm. love. This is mine to give away. And in that exact moment, when I realized that, that's when that light inside of my chest exploded out of my chest in, in rays of light. It was just like, like all over the place. Like it was just like giving it back out, you know? And in that moment, I realized like, wow, wow like love is not to be attained bro it's to be given away mm. and it comes from within myself like i am love you know and like i'm supposed to be giving this love away not trying to get it mm. you know from like women relationships or like you know people like friends and all that and i started to cry dude like it was just like huge realization i cried and i cried and i cried but it was happy it was joy it was like wow and so i started to like thank the shaman and you know like i was rocking back and forth with my hands together like i was praying and i was just like thank you so much thank you thank you thank you you know i couldn't believe it bro and so i felt absolute love it was just like wow i couldn't believe it dude i was crying so much and it was just like i've never been so happy in my life and uh just makes me like even want to cry just thinking about it now bro because it was so mm -hmm. profound but then here's when the started to hit the fan too bro i was like oh my god so the shaman got done with this song it's crazy when you have do you have a sense of how long this whole trip has been so far no 
No, there's no could time. Have been, it could have been like a, a it second. It could have been like an hour. It could have been an hour and a half. You know what I mean? I would estimate maybe. And so, so then the shaman finishes his song. And it's crazy because when you have these experiences and you attain or acquire a piece of knowledge, it's so crazy. And my experience is how it never fails, bro. That's when the shaman finished their song. Wow. It's so crazy. And it, I, it's one thing that I love about it so much, bro, because it, it's it kind of just like verifies to me that the shaman they know what they're doing you know what i mean they they're orchestrating this whole thing and so when he changes the song the 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 tone changes and it's and it's the the vibrations and everything just get lower bro and i start to kind of like feel this like darkness Hmm. start to kind of surround me and like i start to get dragged down to this really dark 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 place and it's just like evil Hmm. it's just like negativity it's just dark and I'm looking around and I see these red eyes, a pair of red eyes over in the distance, bro. And I look to my left and my right on the side of me on the floor and it's black water. It's all black water. And but however, despite that I'm feeling where I'm at, I'm still feeling all the love that I just had, bro. It's just wow. like it came down with me, bro. And it's like nothing could scare me. I wasn't scared. And I looked at these eyes and I looked at all these, like these creatures were swimming in the water. These, like, it was like almost like alligator type of serpent things swimming and they were like surrounding me. And I just let them be. I was just like, I told them, you can be there. It's okay. Cause I just felt so much love for everything and anything. Even that, the darkness. Even the darkness, bro. And so this one of these serpents, this, these things came and grabbed a, a, le- a, a, a hold of my left leg. Like it was threatening to eat it. And I just put my hands together and I, and I prayed to it. And I, you know, I told it, if you want it, you can have it. I don't need it. Cause at that time I knew that all I needed was what I just discovered was the self love. And so I showed it love and I allowed it just do whatever you want. Take it, you know, like I'm not scared. Like mm. I love you. I said that to it. I loved mm. you. And I did this weird thing where I blew, like I blew to my hand to you know like like that and and i blew on it and it just swam back and disappeared bro let go of my leg and all of a sudden bro another piece of of knowledge love yourself but also love the dark you know like have love for it it doesn't mean that you have to tolerate it you know what i mean but just like have love for for it Like, what do you say? Like, what's the right thing to respond in that moment? And like, I certainly had zero idea of what I was supposed to do in that moment. The show was actually called I'm Listening. And so that's kind of a cop out. Like my job in the interviews is like literally just to listen. Uh, if you watch my body language, I'm like. Because <laughs> I'm just like, what did I get myself into? And it's not even like, what did I get myself into? It's like, God, what did you get me into? Because, like, I'm doing this because you told me to hang out with the guy and to talk to him and all these things. You doing okay so far? Yeah? Like, not, okay, so things get a little bit better. Like, a little bit better. He would tell me, like, he had multiple experiences. He goes back multiple times to Peru, uh, has multiple experiences on ayahuasca. Some of them are, like, this dark-themed thing. And I actually heard someone say it earlier. It's like, Sounds kind of like the gospel, like not the whole thing, but little pieces of it. Like he's getting shards of it here and there. And she's like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, like dang it. And I, I would go through this roller coaster of emotions like throughout this entire time that we're chatting together. And um, this is one of the moments where I'm like, yes, this is it. And then things continue. But here's, here's a short clip. This one's a shorter one for y'all. Something just told me to come out here, and I felt like I need to really come out here and see this. And he's like, yeah? And I was like, yeah. He's like, follow me. So he takes me, bro, uh, in this walkway, and I look up, bro. Wow. I could not. It was just like my mind was blown by all the stars, and it was like you see it in a different way. Usually when we see the stars, we see the stars. You know, it's just, but this was not just the stars. This was the universe, bro. This was like everything that then in fact the first words that i heard that were inside bro was just like so loud and clear was i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end 
And for the first time in my life, bro, I understood what that meant. Mm. And I don't read the Bible. I'm, I don't go to church, but it's in the Bible, right? Yeah. Um, and, and other religions reference, you know, things that have always been and always will be. It is the unnamed, the unnameable. Bro, that's what it was. And it spoke to me so loud and clear, bro. Um, I just started praising. I started praising, putting my hands up to God and like the universe. And I was just like, I commit to you. Whatever, whatever this thing yeah, is. Yeah, whatever yeah. this thing is, I am yours. Like, I am, I am you. You know, it was just like everything all at once. You just realize, like, wow. You can hear his heart, yeah? Like, he's got a good heart. Like, he's out here looking for peace. He's out here in a place called freedom. His desire is to give love away. He raises his hands up and whatever you are, like, I commit myself to you. And so I asked him about his conclusions about this entire experience. Like, what did you learn from this? What was the kind of the end of the story and, and what would happen? And then he would share one more kind of trip that he was on, one more hallucination. He, he shared multiple ones, and it's hard for me to cram all this into one thing. The entire interview is like nearly two hours long, and the entire time I'm just like, what in the world is going on here? And uh, um, so it, the full episode will be uploaded on my YouTube channel in March or so, and that's why the footage is still kind of ungraded and un, like it's, the cropping isn't, uh, I want it to look better and all that kind of stuff. I want to share this story with you because it's been, it's been profoundly life-changing for me because what he shares next challenges so much of how I believe the world worked. It challenges so much of how I believe God works and the way that the Holy Spirit works and who those other people are. And I think it's going to challenge you as well. This part, buckle your seatbelts, is the part that really gets me amped. Go ahead, video clip number four. So I'm, I'm sitting there in my mattress and I'm going through this, this journey where I'm in the cosmos. I'm, I'm literally like in the universe. Like, you know, those pictures that you see of the galaxies and stuff like that, like the colors uh -huh. and all that. Bro, I was there. I was in the mix. I was just of it. I was a part of it. I was it. Just chilling it felt so good and so like i'm looking down because i'm kind of slumped you know like i'm laying down halfway and my back's on the wall and i look down at m what my hands and my body is doing and and i noticed too that they're they i have this particular position where my right hand is underneath my belly like laying across my belly and my left hand is up to where like my fingers like two of my fingers are up and my thumb is up but my other fingers are down and I realized, like, oh, my God, like, this is the, the same way that Jesus looks, like, when he's, you like see the Like, all those pictures. candles that you have Yeah, the candle, up, the Mexican yeah. candles, are the, you know, the, yeah. all that, and, and in the posters and all that, I was like, oh, my God, like, what the heck is going on? And I didn't even notice I was doing that. So then I, I look up right in front of me, and guess who's there, bro? I was like, oh, my God, Jesus, bro. Jesus was right in front of me. And what made it even more crazy is that he was doing the same thing that I was doing. Mm -hmm. Like it was a mirror image of my body position, my hands, like the way my hands were. And as soon as I looked up and I realized that it was Jesus and I saw that he was doing the same thing, like our, like we just merged into one. Like we just combined into one thing. Like it was just perfect. It was perfection, dude. And like, I could no longer, when we merged into one, I could no longer see Jesus, but I felt Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I saw this, it was just like warm, orange, kind of yellowish, reddish light all around me, dude. It was pure, just bliss. And in that exact moment, I realized, and this is my interpretation of it, and I don't try to put this on anybody else because, you know, people believe different things, is that it was just like a realization that, oh my God, Jesus is a way of life and a state of being compassion love you know like just ultimate just like i don't know what the word is but it just like it's just beautiful and it's a state of like being in, in a way of life this is like something to strive for to live by like you know and, and like i said now i'm not trying to offend anybody or whatever but i believe that you know jesus is not somebody who's going to come back to earth figuratively you know and like descend from the sky and and you know judge everybody and do all this and that like what i was told and what my dad told me you know like 
no, Jesus is, is, is a way of life, is a spirit, you know, of being. And, oh, my God, it serves as a vehicle to God, you know, like, and, and that's how I see it now. And so it was just like, it made me a believer in Jesus in that aspect. So when people ask me if I believe in Jesus, yes, I do. And when, if they inquire more, I'll tell them how so, you know, and I'm okay with le the, letting them think like, oh, he believes that Jesus is this guy that's going to come down. Like, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. like, I don't care about that. But mm -hmm. if they ask more, then I'll tell them what my belief is, you know. So I do believe in Jesus now, um, but not in the way that I was shown to believe in Jesus before uh -huh. as somebody who's going to like come and do something for me. Um, but more as like a, a principle to live by. And, you know, to is Jesus is a perfect example, along with many other deities or, or religions. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. But that particular um, ceremony right there was just so profound for me, dude. And like, I, I don't read the Bible. I don't go to church. But damn it, Jesus came to me. And I believe in Jesus now in that in that sense. And, uh -huh. you know, and I, and I believe in Buddha also, you know, and I believe in all, anything else that my entire time. I'm like, no, you were so close. You saw Jesus, but then the conclusion, I'm just like, no, like, and this, like, this very Adventist part of me is like, I want to jump in and be like, no, like, Jesus isn't one of the ways, he's the way, and like, all these things, I want to, like, correct him, and in this moment, I feel the Holy Spirit, like, it's as real as if I went over to you, Holy Spirit puts his hand on my shoulders, like, bro, chill, I got this one, like, you don't got to say nothing. And that was so hard to hear because, like, the Adventist part of me, and listen, I've done a lot of time in ministry and, and, and I was a Bible worker and I've done evangelism and the entire thing. And this entire moment, I'm just like, no, but, like, this is wrong. Like, this is off. And the Holy Spirit is just like, chill. I got this one. This was seven months ago. I would continue to journey with Chico, see him week after week after week. We'd do lunch together. We'd hang out. We'd walk our dogs together. And the entire time he's giving me updates in his life, every couple of weeks it seemed like he'd have a new vision, a new dream of what's going on. And one time he would tell me that he was having this reoccurring nightmare that for, for, for weeks or months, I don't know exactly how long, he'd have this nightmare. He'd wake up in his night, in this dream, in his, next to this bed. And next to his bed would be this little girl, this girl who would speak this curse over his life. And she would say, death is coming, death is coming, death is coming. And he's like, I don't know what to do. And so in his dream, one of these times he's having this reoccurring nightmare, he grabs her by the shoulders and yells, no one knows when death comes but God. And he tells me as we're having tacos, he's like, I don't really believe this. I'm just trying to get her to shut up. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, like, what do I do with this? Because like, if it's a dream about like this gold statue, like, yeah, I know what to do with that. Like, I can interpret the dream for you, bro. <laughs> but like... Like, what do I do? What do I say? I got no clue. So he does this. He, this is a really weird sentence. But he texts his shaman. It's a photo up there. He texts his shaman to ask, like, what does this mean? And the shaman gives him a word, which I think was profound. He says, sometimes the death that's coming isn't physical but spiritual. Ooh. And I heard that. I'm like, that sounds good. And so he's like, okay, all right, yeah. And so, so he actually starts to remember what it was like to interact with Jesus, that peace that he felt that he was, when he was experiencing Jesus for that first time. And he's like, hey, yo, Mr. Shaman, I don't know his name, real name, I'm going to call him Mr. Shaman. What do you think about Jesus? And the shaman says, here's the crazy story. I actually believe in Jesus. In fact, before every ayahuasca sermon, ceremony, I asked Jesus for permission to conduct the healing. So Chico's like, word? All right. So Chico goes home and he's in his bedroom and he gets on his knees and he's facing the wall. And he's just like, all right, Jesus, if you're there, like I give you permission to come in. And he has this weird moment. He tells me, I feel so stupid being on my knees in this moment. Like I'm talking to the wall. He says, but I just make room for God to come in. I see Chico a little bit later, and he tells me another one of his visions and his dreams, and this is a really weird one. He, he talks about, like, this geometrical shape, this thing that's moving and breathing, and in his vision, he has clarity that this is a womb, and this womb pushes out a word, this thing, it says, Anaya, this is what you'll call her. Now, Chico doesn't have a daughter, but he, he, he understands the interpretation of this dream is that he's going to have a daughter, her name's going to be Anaya. And, of course, I'm just like, uh, cool story, bro, like, I don't know what to do with this. And then 24 hours go by. And Chico sends me a text, bro, now I know God is speaking to me. I'm like, okay. And he sends me a screen grab. He Googles the name Anaya, derived from the Hebrew, meaning God has answered. And like, 
I thought that was cool, but it was so impactful for the Chico that this was the straw that broke the camel's back. He goes to his bathroom, he's crying, and his face hits the floor, and he finally just says, all right, Jesus, I'm convinced, I know you're there, I give my life to you. In that moment, Chico gives his heart over to the spirit that's been striving for him the entire time. He's been experiencing the Holy Spirit. He's been experiencing Jesus in all these really abnormal ways, ways that I'm not comfortable with, nor do I understand. And yet in this moment, Chico gets on his knees and gives his heart over to Christ. This was three months ago. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, this was three months ago. I've been journeying with Chico ever since, and it's been a pleasure to see the fruit coming out of this man's life. I give him the Bible. I'm like, here, bro, read this Bible. Read through the book of John this entire month. And he's just digging into the word of God. He sends me Marco Polo's every once in a while. He's like, I got a two-hour break. And he's in this car. He's like, man, I'm just going to read through the entire book of Acts. Like, this guy is hungering and thirsting after the word. And what I'm seeing is that God is coming alive. And God is speaking to him and discipling him and rearing him and drawing him to himself. Just like the book promised he would. And I'm blown away because I get to see the fruit in his life. Chico comes up to me and says, man, Justin, I want to be used by God. And it was really cool because we actually got to get him on stage one time and share his testimony at Storyline Church, Ty Gibson's church. We got to bring him along and share his his testimony. He says, Justin, I I want to do this more. I want to share what God has done for me. I want to share what Jesus has done for me. And I I told him, bro, don't ever believe the lie that you need a pulpit to be used by God. I told him, your very barbershop chair is your pulpit. This is where you will meet people. This is where God will work through you. And so he's like, really? Like, this is awesome. This is exactly what I need to hear. So when people come into the, into the barbershop now, people that he's been cutting their hair for years, this kid that he's been coming in, they have a, a couple things in common back in the past. These things like, oh yeah, shrooms. Like, yeah, yeah. And they talk about all the latest drugs and the highs that they've been on. And so the kid asks him, yo, you find any good shrooms lately? And Chico's like, bro, I found a better high. And the kid's like, and the kid's like, really? Like, what kind of shrooms have you been finding? <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 bro. Let me tell you like it is. Just a couple weeks ago, this guy, CJ, comes into his barbershop. This guy's a recovering alcoholic in, in NA meetings, Narcotics Anonymous. And he's struggling with this, this thing to overcome. And Chico is the man to minister to this guy. In the barbershop, Chico lays hands on this brother, prays for him, and gives this man the gospel. Why? Because the Spirit did something in Chico's life and drew him to himself. In fact, three weeks ago, I had the privilege of being able to put Chico, the old Chico, to death and to be able to baptize Chico in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Chico is a diehard follower of Jesus. He's leading people to Christ. In that very day that where, where he got baptized, he's bringing his mom to Christ, his girlfriend to Christ, CJ and CJ's girlfriend come. They're all standing and committing their hearts to the Lord because of what God has done in Chico's life. And it's done so much for my faith. Because I used to think that I have to have all the answers. i got to do everything right, that I have to work for someone's soul. And if I'm lucky enough, and if I do all the right things, then maybe God will bless my efforts. And I've come to realize the truth that this isn't actually how it happens. It's not up to me. It's not based about right answers. Sometimes knowledge does only one thing and it puffs, puffs you up. And what I'm learning is to learn how to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and what he is doing in the lives of people out there. And sometimes what he's doing looks very different than what I'm comfortable with. Sometimes what he's doing is is in all kinds of boxes that I've never even opened with. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And I should say this disclaimer. And in fact, I've been asked to say expressly this disclaimer. Like, are you going to address the drug thing? Listen, I'm not saying that we go do ayahuasca. In fact, you ask Chico right now what his thoughts are about this. He's like, bro, I never need it again. I was become, I, he's, he's, I actually noticed the trend. I was becoming dependent on this thing. And what I found in Jesus was so much better than like everything that ayahuasca tried to offer me, everything that shrooms tried to give me, Jesus has fulfilled and then more. He says, I don't have any desire for this. This thing was just leading me down the wrong path, but God met him on that path. Because God is good. And God is the kind of guy who interrupts your journey so that you can actually be drawn to him. Because he's that good. I'm not endorsing shrooms. I'm not endorsing ayahuasca or hallucinations or shamans or these out-of-body experiences, astral projections. None of it. What I'm endorsing is the Holy Spirit because God is good. He's drawing people to himself. And he's doing this thing in my life where he's dropping down walls and barriers. Not the walls and barriers of standards. No, no, no. Those are still there. There's righteousness. There's a right way to live. There's, There's a way to have a clean conscience and a pure heart. I'm all about that. 
but the walls that he's tearing down is these us versus them walls. As a we are the right and we're the true children of God and they're degenerates and they're not. No, no, pressing together is about looking at each other the way that God sees us. Because as much as I might have looked at Chico as a lost cause, as someone doing all the wrong things, and I could have been maybe rightly interpreting that. When God saw Chico, God saw his son, and that's all he saw. And some of you all need to know that, that when God looks at you, he sees a child. You think, oh no, but I've gone all the way, I've done all the wrong things, I've, I've had sex out of marriage, I have an addiction to pornography, I've done drugs, I've done all these things, I've, I haven't prayed in years, I haven't studied the Bible. No, no, no. Even with all those things that rightly so you could say is maybe not the ideal way to live, God looks at you through one lens only. And that's through the cross. The cross was there to establish your value and your worth. God knew that we could not accept the truth that he actually loves us even though we've screwed up. So he goes to the cross to pay the price, to show the reality so that the veil can be torn from our eyes so that we might believe that we are actually his beloved. And the way that he proves it is that he seals that decision in blood. You are not the product of your bad mistakes. You're not the product of all your wrong turns in life. Even when you're in a jungle in the Amazon River, hanging out with shamans and doing all the wrong things, the Spirit pursues you because there's value in your life, because he loves you, because you're his child. So never believe the lie of the enemy that you've done too much, you've gone too far, that you are not worth it anymore. We press together because we have clarity that we are in fact his children. I got the cue. Cool. I'm going to close. <laughs> but does this land for you? This is good news, y'all, that God is pursuing you. And I don't know where you are in your life right now, but all you need to do is what Chico did. And if you've never done it before, I invite you to do it with me today. And if you've done it before, just realign your heart with this, this motive, this, this, this truth. And it's this. God, I open my heart to you. I give you permission to do what you want to do in my life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the truth as it is in Jesus that you are a good father and that you've looked at us as your children. And even though we might have trouble believing that today, maybe we just want to open up our heart to you and say, God, we give you permission to do what you've always wanted to do. Even if I don't understand what or how or what that looks like, I put my faith in you and give you permission. In Jesus' name, amen.